Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers Virtual College Fair powered by StriveScan. My name is Julian, and I'm going to be your facilitator for this evening. So I'm going to go over a few housekeeping items before we get started. The first one is how do I ask questions? You can ask questions using the Q&A chat box at the bottom of your screen. I encourage you to do so throughout the evening. You can write any question to any presenter at any time throughout the evening, not just the one who is speaking. Just make sure that you address the college that you want to answer your question, so that way no questions are left behind. Uh, your camera and microphones are going to remain off, so just sit back, relax, and enjoy the information. And then there are no more sessions for this particular fair except for a transfer Carolinas fair that is going to be available in a week. You can find the information for that at strivescan.com backsplash Carolinas, where other recordings for this fair will be available within about a week as well. So we're gonna get started with our first presenter for the evening, and that is going to be from the University of California, Irvine. We're gonna allow them to get their screen share up and running. And while they do, just want to continue to encourage you to ask those questions throughout the night. I know we have some eager uh, presenters ready and willing to answer those. So we're going to leave the floor over to the University of California, Irvine. Great. Thank you so much. And welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening. My name is Michelle Burns, and I am one of the regional admissions counselors for the University of California, Irvine. I myself am based on the East Coast of the U.S. in New Haven, Connecticut. So happy to um, always meet with you virtually for the moment, hopefully sometime in the future in person as I get down to see you all. Tonight, I'm so excited to just share a little bit of information about the University of California, Irvine with you. Um, so a little bit to start with, go ahead and hop on over to the West Coast, which is where we're located. We are part of the University of California system of institutions. So there are nine undergraduate institutions within the UC system, and we are so happy to be part of that system. We are well known not only in the state of California, but also around the country and the world as well as one of the top research um, institutions in the country. So of the nine UC campuses, five of us are ranked in the top 10 amongst all public universities. UCI is currently ranked number eight. We are located in sunny Southern California, so about 45-ish minutes south of LA, an hour-ish north of San Diego, depending on two things, who's driving and what the traffic is like. We're located just 10 minutes from Newport Beach, so it's a beautiful location. We get the ranking of number one school for beach lovers um, with three other beaches within a 30 minute radius of us. So lots of fun things to do off campus as well. As you're looking across the country, we're also ranked as one of the safest cities in the country. There's lots of fun things to do in Orange County and our students definitely take advantage of uh, hiking, biking, going to the beach, going to Disney just about 25 minutes away, but it also provides our students with a lot of opportunities for um, internships and opportunities um, to get those jobs while you're in school. About one third of all Fortune 500 companies are located in Irvine. A little bit about our schools. We have 14 different academic schools at UCI, so you can see them all broken out there. Um, if you are not decided what you want to do yet, that's okay. Welcome to the club. We have plenty of opportunities for you. You are definitely welcome to apply in undeclared. We also really celebrate interdisciplinary studies at UCI. You can see that even with our undergraduate campus and how it's designed. We have about 30,000 undergrads at UCI. It's not at all uncommon to see that a student is studying biology, also wants to learn about humanities or dance, and then is you know, playing club soccer. So we have students that are interested in a variety of different areas. We actually require our staff and faculty to be interdisciplinary as well. So our faculty may be teaching in one area, but then they're team teaching with another faculty member in another area as well. You'll see that echoed in our research and then our projects on campus too. So never feel like you have to just be in a box on campus. Our two first year housing complexes are located right in this inner circle as well. So it's really easy for you to get around your first year. You definitely don't need a car if you're coming off of campus or from out of state. Um, it's really easy to get around the area and we have lots of opportunities through our Anteater Express, which is our all electric shuttle, which will take you all around Irvine as well. 
a little bit about our internships and project-based learning. Um, we also want you to be hands-on and um, go ahead and apply what you're learning in the classroom outside of it as well. So you'll see a number of our classes will work with companies in the area. I mentioned that about one third of all Fortune 500 companies are located in Irvine. So you're gonna have opportunities to maybe work with Blizzard Entertainment or Disney or Google while you're in school working on a project there. If you're interested in research, 73% of our undergrads participate in research before they leave us. We also see students involved in a lot of co-curricular activities like our anteater racing program there. And then I mentioned students can combine interests. So like our dancers here working in our exercise science lab on a balance study, um, they may be on our pre-med track or they may just be interested interested in learning more about that study as well. We also have study abroad with our sister institutions and at UCI um, ourselves, we also have our own study abroad program. When I asked students one of the reasons why they sought out UCI and three of the words that they think of when they talk about UCI, I hear collaborative, I hear, um, and I also hear diverse as one of the words. So it's really a reason that a lot of students seek us out. You can see the background of our students here, but also you'll see it on campus with the way students are sharing out their different cultures. Um, so it's really great to see students get involved um, in learning about each other's cultures and backgrounds and celebrating that on campus. We want to support you however you identify it as well. Um, so you'll see a number of different centers on campus uh, where we celebrate you and make sure you feel like you have a home as well. And then you'll see our academic resources available to you. So our Learning and Academic Resource Center, Writing Center, all those great ways to keep you on track. And of course, you need some fun student activities. Our, uh, our mascot is Peter the Anteater. So you can definitely come to one of our presentations and learn why we're the Anteaters. We're a D1 school in the Big West Conference, lots of club sports and lots of other things to get involved in. A little bit about the application, one application, all nine UCs, no early action or early decision, and we are test free. Um, so no worries about submitting test scores to us um, this for this next year's junior class. Last thing I'll give you is please come and hear more than six minutes about us. We do weekly campus presentations on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. So go ahead and sign up at that website there. If you're viewing this in later times, then go ahead and click on that link there or that QR code to get register with us. Thanks so much and hope to get to see you all someday soon. Great, thank you so much. Uh, we are gonna move on to our next presenter from Soka University. We're going to allow them to get their screen share up and running. So just want to continue to encourage you to ask any questions you want throughout the session here. And we'll leave the floor over to Soka University. Great. Thanks so much. My name is Aaron. I am with the Office of Admission here at Soka University of America. The Of America distinction is because we actually have ourselves a sister school in Tokyo, Japan. So our sort of name did get started in Japan. We were built on the Buddhist principles of peace, human rights, and the sanctity of life. We are, however, located in Southern California, not too far from UCI, actually. So it's kind of nice that I get to follow up UCI as you can uh, kind of keep us in the same region, at least mentally, as you go through and see some of the, the photos here. But we really are a mission-driven university, not a tuition-driven university. And our goal at SOCA is for all of our students to, in some capacity, live out this mission statement upon graduation, and that is to foster a steady stream of global citizens committed to living a contributive life. And for us, a global citizen is somebody who has these three attributes that you see on screen, the wisdom, courage, and compassion are, are great things to see in our applicants, but again, really something that we, we hope to instill in our students as they go through their four-year journey at SUA. So all students do go through a, a four-year curriculum plan at SOGO. We don't have a traditional transfer process, which is something to keep in mind. Um, we're pretty new, established back in 2001. Uh, in Aliso Viejo, which is Southern uh, Orange County, about 450 total undergraduate students, really more about like 45% of which are international, the rest being from various parts of the US. We are a residential campus with about 98% of our students living on campus. And uh, we offer the BA in liberal arts. We're fully accredited. We have five concentrations, which I'll go over. We have a study abroad requirement, so everybody will go abroad and everybody will learn a new language and the student faculty ratio is really great, about eight to one really, and then average class size is 12. We have NEIA athletics as well as merit and need-based aid. Rankings are pretty great. 
Um, it, things do look kind of rural here in this photo, but that's just because we're located right up against this regional park which is really nice to, uh, to helps with, I guess, noise pollution and um, keeps with some of the really great aesthetics that we look for when um, keeping with like themes of tranquility and being able to, to really focus and, and have that space to, to study. So everyone's gonna go through a general education requirement. You can kind of see what that entails up here. Our concentrations are areas of study that really provide you, or programs that provide you breadth as well as depth of knowledge. So. Um, humanities, yeah, humanities, environmental studies, life sciences, international studies, and SBS are really what SUA is known for. We don't have an engineering or like the computer science department. We very much are that classical sense of education. Life sciences is our probably newest and shiniest new toy that uh, is really geared towards that pre-health, pre-med track for the students that are looking to make themselves that much more, uh, I think, uh, marketable towards a medical degree in the future. And applying to med school. Uh, we offer, yes, you require actually a, a language program, and uh, we offer Spanish, French, Japanese, and Chinese. You're going to take those languages for two full years, after which your third year you'll be abroad in a, another country that's speaking that target language. It is just the one semester, lasts somewhere between four to six months long, and it's included in your cost of tuition. So your tuition money at SOCA pays for everything that you would need to, to take care of uh, and to make that trip happen. So your flight out, your flight back, visa, transportation, housing and meal stipend, all of that's covered through your SOCA University tuition money. So it's really nice. Um, students don't have to worry about coming up with extra funds to make this, this trip possible. As again, it is required. Quick little overview on, on res life. So everybody does live on campus, two to a room max and everybody gets their own private bathroom. Second through fourth year students would live in a split double where they have their own private room with their own door that locks and then they share a bathroom with a roommate which is pretty great um, everything is really much pretty much on on campus in terms of what you need laundry service is free parking and printing is free so um some really great stuff to kind of help make the education that much more affordable and, and make you know the students life that much easier great you know internship and um, club opportunities as you would find anywhere else in, at another small institution brief look at our athletics facility from overhead here and some of the conferences that we compete in. Financial aid, so who can receive it? We're really great about providing a really comprehensive and I think competitive financial aid package for everybody. The big thing to, to note is that we offer what's called our SOCA Opportunity Grant, which looks at families earned income. So if a student's family makes $60,000 or less, tuition is actually free. Um, and beyond that, we have our merit-based scholarships as well as athletic scholarships and then loans to help you fund the rest of your education. Cool little caveat is that room and board actually includes your meal plan. Everybody's on the exact same meal plan here at SUA and all students get a MacBook Pro when they're admitted and they keep it when they graduate. So um, not a whole lot of nickel and diming as you get here, which is pretty great. Keeps things simple for students. We do have an early action deadline of November 1st, regular decision deadline of January 15th. And then pretty straightforward application. We're going to be test optional as well moving forward. That's essentially um, my spiel. I don't have a QR code yet because we've got ops running on some different stuff there. But my email, my phone number, and then the uh, admissions Instagram handle in case you want to learn more or connect with me in the future. So thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. We are going to move on to our next presenter from Macquarie uh, University in Sydney. And we're going to allow them to get their screen share up and running. And while they do, just want to continue to encourage those questions in the Q&A chat box there. And you can watch any sessions from this evening's fair within about a week at strivescan.com slash Carolinas. And we'll leave the floor over to Macquarie University. Awesome. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Leanne Allen and I represent Macquarie University in Sydney, Australia. So a little bit further over the ocean um, from our previous colleagues in California. Um, Sydney is a wonderful city, as you can see here. Um, it is stunning. Um, as a Macquarie student, you have the best of both worlds. The big cosmopolitan city experience with the incredible beaches, as you can see here. And then you can retreat back to campus, which is a stunning Parkland University. We have about 40,000 students on campus, and of that, there are 12,000 international students, so an incredibly diverse student population as well. 
A lot of people ask what it's like to study in Sydney and it is very similar to studying in the States. Australian students want to have the same college experience as an American does. Um, we have all the clubs and associations um, that you could find um, here. We have over 140 on campus available. We have really strong sports um, and aquatic centre as well, as you can see from that middle photo. Um, we do allow, um, are able to have an outdoor swimming pool being in the Southern Hemisphere. Our day, um, if it's below 60 degrees, in winter we'll complain it's too cold if it's above sort of 90 degrees in summer we'll complain it's too hot so we do like a moderate temperate climate in Sydney um, if you think you'll like to see the snow you can certainly do that it's about three hours from the city centre you're able to go up to the ski mountains um, this is our first picture there is our um, mascot our Mac warrior um, the university is named after the fifth governor of New South Wales who was Scottish hence why um, we have a guy in a Scottish quilt as our emblem. Um, the university also um, prioritised entrepreneurship for students and staff alike. Um, and that middle photo at the bottom there is our incubator hub um, where students can apply to have a desk if they have um, an entrepreneurial idea um, and they really wanna focus on that. We also have a strong orientation week in the first week you arrive in Australia. We'll actually pick you up from the airport as well when you first get to campus. Um, and then you're able to explore the campus and get to know all the different areas that it was truly suit you as you, throughout your entire degree. Um, being in the Australia, our um, system is a little bit different. We don't have general education requirements. So our degrees are generally three years in duration. You can certainly do a double degree if you would like, um, for example, a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science, which would take you four years to complete. There are a couple of exceptions to that rule. Our engineering um, and our uh, psychology are four year degree programs and we have um, a medical program, which is six years in duration. Um, some of our most popular classes are our um, business and accounting and international administration. Um, we also specialise in media and communications um, and international relations and really strong criminology and cyber security. Um, we specialise in software and telecommunications engineering as well. And fun fact for you, we actually invented Wi-Fi, so you're welcome. Um, and as I mentioned briefly before, we do have a six year um, medical program straight out of high school, um, which is a Bachelor of Clinical Science and Doctor of Medicine. Um, and you're able to come back to the States in your sixth year and uh, do a placement at our partner hospital here so you can get that US experience if you plan to come back. Um... You can certainly live on campus when you um, study with us. It's not compulsory or guaranteed, but as long as you apply early, you shouldn't have any problem getting a spot. Um, generally, you have your own bedroom and your own bathroom. Um, if Australians do find it funny that Americans share bedrooms in college, so you get to sort of enjoy that social um, cultural difference as well. You can have a meal plan, but it is associated with your accommodation provider. So keep that in mind when you sort of are choosing where you would like to stay. Um, unlike the US, it's not part of the university central system. System. You might live on a corridor um, or you may have uh, live um, in an apartment with five or six other students. So quite a few different options there depending on what kind of lifestyle you want. So how much does it all cost? On average, our tuition is about $24,000 per year. Um, cost of attendance, including um, all your living costs like travel, um, insurance, um, and entertainment comes to about $40,000 per year. And keep in mind, a majority of the degrees are three years in duration. So it can be quite substantially um, more affordable to study overseas. Um, you are able to work while studying in Australia. A minimum wage is about $20 an hour. We are um, US FAFSA loan eligible and we do have merit-based scholarships available for students. Um, it's pretty straightforward to apply to the university. It is free to apply um, and it's a direct online application. It's very much an academic based process. So we'll assess your um, transcripts and your test scores, although we are currently test optional due to COVID-19. Um, so we can just assess your GPA if you would like. We don't require essays or recommendation letters though. Um, as I said, it's very much an academic based process. And in theory, we should have 100% acceptance rate because you could see online exactly what you need to achieve to gain entry to the university. Um, once you've submitted an application, you will generally get an outcome within about two weeks of applying. Um, and then you're able to apply for your scholarships, financial aid, and accommodation, purchase your overseas healthcare insurance, um, apply for your visa, and hopefully come to Australia. 
Being in the Southern Hemisphere, our dates are a tiny bit different. Um, we commence in the February and July of each year, but a majority of our US students do decide to start with us um, in the July intake. We can have everything organised early on in the year. Um, so it's a pretty um, relaxed start from finishing high school, high school until you commence with us at the end of um, July. And then our summer vacation is generally December, January and February. That is all from me. Thanks so much for joining. Here is my contact details. I would love to hear from you and I hope you enjoy the evening. All righty, thank you so much. We're gonna move over to our next presenter from the University of Melbourne and we're gonna allow them to get their screen share up and running. Great, okay, good day everyone. We're going to uh, take about an hour's flight down from Sydney to Melbourne and stay within Australia. So I'm Todd St. Brain the University of Melbourne North America manager. So welcome to UniMelb, or as we say in the local Aboriginal language, Waman Jaika. Uh, Melbourne is a large public research intensive university in the Southern part of Australia. Um, and we're a very comprehensive university. And as you can see, uh, we have a wide range of disciplines that excel uh, at the global level. So this is the beautiful Great Barrier Reef, which is about a four hour flight north of uh, Melbourne. Imagine taking classes in your freshman year with Madeline Van Oppen, who is bioengineering heat resistant coral in an effort to save the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, this is just one example of the kind of academic experience you can have at a university that's considered an Australian version of an Ivy League. And for all of you in the Carolinas, UNC Chapel Hill is one of our exchange partners. So this is our main campus. Uh, we're right in the heart of Melbourne, about 15 minutes from downtown in between the biomedical precinct and our version of Little Italy. One thing that I love about Australia is that it's a very multicultural country. And we're also a very international university with nearly half of our students coming from overseas. We're very large with over 25,000 undergraduates. And there is a community of several hundred American students if you want to be able to stay connected with the American uh, community. We have great outcomes for our graduates and interesting to note that all international students can stay and work two years full-time in Australia upon graduation, which just means you have options as to where you could begin your career after your studies. So as Leanne mentioned, uh, it's standard in Australia that uh, degrees are just three years, which is a savings in itself. At the current exchange rate, our annual tuition is gonna be about $33,000. We would recommend having anywhere between 15 and 20,000 US dollars for living expenses. And we also can use uh, US educational loans at the University of Melbourne uh, with scholarships for high achieving students. So yes, the culture in Australia for admissions is only based on academic achievement. And we'll get into just a moment what those details are. And you're doing all of this in Melbourne, uh, truly one of the most livable cities in the world, also regarded as Australia's sports, cultural and technology capital. So we have streamlined our degrees into eight options with uh, about 150 majors. So this could be within the Bachelor of Agriculture, we call the Humanities and Liberal Arts a Bachelor of Arts, and I've highlighted here in bold some of the more popular majors. Uh, there's an entire degree in biomedicine, we call it commerce business. There's also design, uh, performing arts, uh, music, and a plethora in the sciences, uh, including engineering and IT. And there's a whole range of opportunities for majors, um, majors and minors. Um, and so we call degrees courses. You have to learn to speak Australian. So this QR code will take you there to see where your interest might be because it could be certainly more than one major and possibly more than one degree. So we have uh, what's called breadth subjects, which is 25% of your degree uh, is anything of your choosing outside of your major. The only Australian university that has something that you could consider as gen ed light but it just means flexibility, gives you more time to explore or to declare a major. If you wanna to extend to a fourth year, we have these things called concurrent diplomas, or you could do a year of independent research, which is what we call honors. So if you're coming from a high school, it's guaranteed entry based on a minimum SAT or ACT score, an unweighted GPA, and we do have AP exams to meet uh, prerequisites. 
Now we are not test optional, but we do have alternatives to the SAT or the ACT, particularly an Australian online uh, standardized test or an aggregate of AP scores. If you don't have an AP exam, you would have to present um, the syllabus of the university level subject uh, for review. Um, and we also take the IB for anyone doing international baccalaureate and any transfer students, really straightforward. It's just a 3.0 for admissions with a year of college or university. So as Leanne mentioned, it is different down under. Our seasons are opposite. So our semesters you have the option to start either in our semester one in March or semester two in late July because core classes are offered every semester. You would actually have until June after you graduate of your senior year to apply for our mid-year intake. My advice is just to apply when you're applying to schools in the US because we have rolling admissions and deferrals are something that tend to be granted quite automatically, which would be in Australia, which would give you the chance to do a bit of a mini gap year. And we also guarantee accommodation in either a college or a student apartment. Thus, there's lots of clubs and societies. And we'll end with a brief campus tour, which shows beautiful historic sandstone buildings, but also very modern facilities, uh, lecture halls, there's the labs. You stop off at the car park, because of course you do things like film Mad Max movies there. This is Melbourne, a city of sports, culture, and about 40 minutes from the beach. Uh, so please get in touch um, if you would like to uh, uh, based in San Francisco, if you'd like to um, have more of a chat about University of Melbourne. Thanks so much. All righty, thank you so much. We're gonna move on to University College Dublin and they're getting their screen share up and running. So we'll leave the floor to you. All right. Hi everyone, my name is Kendall Hook. I am a representative with University College Dublin or UCG. I am based in New York, but I work with all of our students in the Southeast region as well as the Mid-Atlantic. So um, I'm happy to take you um, back west um, over to Ireland. Um, so UCD is located in Dublin, Ireland. Um, Dublin and Ireland in general is incredibly safe friendly and welcoming country. It's often ranked in the top 10 safest countries in the world, according to the Global Peace Index, and often ranked um, one of the world's friendliest countries, often number one in many travel magazines. But for being such a small country, it is mighty. Um, it's very globally connected, multicultural society. So you have people coming from all over the world um, to Ireland to, to live, to work, to go to school. Um, so there are there's a, a very diverse population in, in Dublin in particular. I'm um, speaking of work, Dublin is the EU headquarter capital, so we have companies like Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Airbnb, um, huge multinational corporations that are located in Dublin, which makes for an awesome opportunity for networking, whether it's for internships or jobs after graduation, um, because you can stay back for up to a year in Ireland um, after you graduate to work. Um, of course, um, you'll hear Gaelic and see Gaelic everywhere, but we are English speaking. Um, and Dublin itself is ranked in the top 10 best student cities in the world. Um, over half the population is under the age of 36 or so. So it's incredibly youthful, vibrant, great nightlife, art scene, business scene. Um, it's easy to navigate. Um, so it's a great a great city for students. It has everything you would want and need, um, but it's not overwhelming in size. Um, so great public transportation, um, an excellent place to spend four years. So our campus um, is the what we would call the Belfield campus. It's located just about two and a half miles south of Dublin city center um, in what is known as the embassy district. So it's a very safe, beautiful area of Dublin. Um, we are one of Ireland's oldest universities, founded in 1854 um, and ranked the number one university in Ireland again, which is really exciting. So we have um, top-notch academics, but we are also the largest and most international university in Ireland. Um, so we have about 30,000 students, um, um, almost 30% or so um, are coming from outside of Ireland. So that's a huge population. We have several hundred US students on campus every year. So you wouldn't be the only ones from the Carolinas. And um, we have a large range of degree programs, which I will touch on 
in just a moment. Um, but our campus feels very familiar. It is consolidated all together. Um, you don't have to commute to get to class. Um, we have all the amenities that you're typically used to. Um, so we have the gym, the student life center, um, counseling support services, academic support services, um, tutoring, career center. Um, we have everything that you would, you would want or need um, to feel supported during your time at UCD. Um, I mentioned the Student Life Center, and that is the hub of all activity. So we have over 130 clubs and organizations to choose from on campus, and that is the best way to plug in and find your friends while you're there. So um, some of the more popular ones, of course, are our international student group, um, but also like the French Society, where you can get free croissants every week, um, or the Harry Potter Society, or the Irish Trad Society, which is like traditional Irish music. Um, so there's plenty of options to, to get plugged in um, and find your niche during your time there. We do have on-campus housing, so every student would have their own single bedroom and you would share common facilities with a smaller group of students um, coming from all, all around the world, um, typically about three to four others. Um, I, I lost my train of thought. Um, all our students, um, their, our accommodations are guaranteed for um, first year international students. So um, you don't have to worry about securing um, a, a place on campus. Um, you, you don't have to commute far to classes either. We have a range of undergrad degree programs, um, over 70 different combinations to choose from. Um, we do have some three-year options, but the vast majority of our students are on campus for the full four years. Um, this is um, a list of our colleges that we have on campus, um, but like some of my friends who have already presented, um, UCD is similar in the fact that we don't have general education requirements, um, so you can dive right in and go straight into your major. But if you don't know what you want to do, um, I would recommend the Liberal Arts and Sciences program, which is pretty popular with our US students. And it gives you some flexibility before ultimately making your choice at the end of year one or year two. Um, we are on the Common App. So you can start applying to us through the Common App or directly in the fall. Um, our applications open October 1st. And um, I recommend applying by December 1st if you're interested in, in applying for scholarships. So all in, UCD is about $40,000 a year, including cost of living and your tuition. Um, so we are less expensive than going out of state or to a private school here in the US. And we have scholarships available for international students that range between 10 to 100% of tuition. Um, and we do accept US federal aid as well. And um, these are my contact details. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, coming in to listen tonight. Thanks. All righty, thank you so much. We are gonna move on to our last uh, presenter for the evening from LaRush, and we're gonna allow them to get their screen share up and running. And if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the Q&A chat box as this is our last presenter for the evening. And this is the last session for the Carolinas Fair this week. So we are gonna leave the floor over to LaRush College here. Hi, thank you. I just wanted to say thanks for joining the fair this evening. And I'm actually based in South Florida, so I'm in the same time zone as you. Um, I'm just about to start my presentation, but the last slide has my contact info. So please feel free to reach out. We have a, a very sort of specific um, and focused application process. It's our own application and it's very detailed. Um, so I'm happy to walk you through that one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, thanks so much for joining. Welcome to Les Roches, one of the world's leading hospitality business schools founded in 1954. We teach the Swiss way, immersive, hands-on, and always with an eye to your future career. Ranked among the top three institutions worldwide for hospitality education, Les Roches prepares entrepreneurial and innovative graduates, offering students a global and personalized education based on the Swiss model of experiential learning. Before we examine the details of the bachelor's degree, let's take a moment to talk about what we mean when we say hospitality. The traditional hospitality industry includes hotels and resorts and restaurants and bars, of course, as well as events and travel. The expansion of the hospitality industry to now include the experience economy, 
a new area of focus across many industries from real estate to luxury retail to social media, including all types of client services and interactions that prioritize the consumer experience. Our excellent reputation as one of the top hospitality schools means we have a long list of international companies eager to take on interns and graduates from Les Rush. Real world experience plays a key role in your Les Rush education. Professional internships, of which there are two built into the undergraduate program, as well as business field trips and consultancy projects give you a chance to apply all that you've learned, gain new insights and grow your industry network. 94% of our graduates have at least one job offer upon completion of their studies, ranging from luxury retail marketing to investment banking to user experience development at top Silicon Valley companies. As you can see from this slide, our internship and job placements are diverse, ranging from large hotel groups like the Ritz Carlton to investment banks like JP Morgan to luxury retailers like Louis Vuitton. Our two main campuses are in Bluch in Crown Montana, Switzerland, and in Marbella, Spain. Our student body comprises over 100 nationalities, with approximately 7% of our students hailing from the Americas, and the majority of our students, 44%, coming from Europe. Our Swiss campus is nestled in a charming village in the Alps. We have an active student life on campus with groups like Sharp Speakers, which is a public speaking organization, to the Arts Society, to student government. We host events like Cultural Night, Les Roches Got Talent, and the World of Wines Expo. Physical activities are abundant in Switzerland. Hiking and of course skiing and snowboarding. And both campuses are located within a short train or plane ride to major European cities and many students travel over the weekend to places like Paris, Geneva, Barcelona, and even Marrakesh. In Marbella, students enjoy the mild climate by sailing, playing golf, and enjoying water sports year round. Marbella is known as the jewel of the Costa del Sol in the south of Spain. It's one of Europe's top luxury tourism destinations destinations and boasts a rich Mediterranean culture and international population. Of course, the cornerstone of our program are the academics. Here is a linear representation of our three and a half year bachelor program. As I mentioned before, two paid full-time internships are incorporated into the program and students will go abroad to pursue their internship assisted by our full-time internship office that organizes recruiting events and prepares the students to interview with our interview ind industry partners. You will also notice above each semester, we have identified a specific theme for that semester. Initially, it's practical arts. Uh, it moves on after the professional internship to fundamentals of business, hospitality. Again, another internship that moves on to business integration and strategies. And finally, in the final semester are the specializations. We offer four specializations depending upon students' specific interests and what we perceive to be industry trends and needs. These evolve every few years based on an ever-changing hospitality landscape. Um, both campuses offer hospitality entrepreneurship and digital marketing strategies. And at the Spain campus, we have resort development and management. And at our Swiss campus, we have hotel financial performance management. If this sounds like a great fit for your interests, we have a fantastic summer experience program for high school students offered at both our Swiss and Spanish campuses. The program offers an overview of the bachelor's program in hospitality management and a brief introduction to the specializations. It's an ideal opportunity to explore this path before committing to our very focused program. I'm very happy to connect with anyone who's interested to answer questions or provide more information after the presentation, please feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for your time. All righty, thank you so much. Uh, Stacy. if you had anything else to add, I did. I want to make sure. <clears throat> nope, all set, thank you. Okay, awesome, thank you so much. 
and we have some time left. So we are going to get uh, into our round robin session uh, section of this session. Uh, and that is going to be so, uh, starting off with a question. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we're going to get started right back up at the top with University of California, Irvine, and make our way down. Thank you, Julian. Uh, my advice, especially this time of year when I'm talking to so many students about the cost of attendance, is to really have that conversation with your parents or parents with your students right now. Um, you know, I think we all we all heard we have various costs of attendance, and I know so many of uh, my colleagues here have very affordable costs of attendance in Europe, um, which is uh, or in in Australia, which is fantastic. Um, but even here, state to state, as we know, is very different. So just make sure you're checking in with yourself and your parents about cost of college and affordability. And also know you're gonna find a place that works for you. And there's so many places that are great fits. Awesome, thank you so much. Soka University. Yeah, I think, you know, starting this early is great. It's, it's awesome to see folks, you know, showing up to events like these and, and getting your ducks in a row. So I always encourage students at this point to, to continue to stay organized, make sure you prioritize uh, certain deadlines, make sure that you have all of the application materials that you need for the respective schools. Some schools have earlier deadlines than others. It's going to vary from the big to the small, private to the public. So uh, just keep your, your organization nice and neat and make sure you give yourself the best, I guess, chance to, to complete and give yourself that, that opportunity to, to be evaluated when, when that time comes. Awesome, thank you so much. And Macquarie University? Once I look far and wide, there's so many incredible opportunities available and you'll probably never have so much flexibility again in your life to explore so many different places. And if the thought of doing a full degree overseas is terrifying, make sure you at least do a study abroad semester or year or summer. Um, because you will never, ever regret that decision. Thank you. And uh, University of Melbourne? Yeah, so uh, first of all, I remember when I was a high school student being overwhelmed by choices. So if, if that's you, don't sweat it. You're going to figure it out. It will all make sense. Uh, also, I would say really make use of the virtual uh, resources during the pandemic, and especially it's challenging to get a go abroad to visit campus. So if you can do virtual tours or, you know, we all offer events where you can connect with our current students. Um, so it's one thing to hear it from us, but to hear from other students about their experience, um, definitely take advantage of that. Thank you. University College Dublin. Yeah, I would say um, don't be afraid to reach out to the um, admissions representative for your region. Um, even schools abroad have them, and we're in these positions to help you. So any questions that you may have, um, we're always happy to connect um, to help you find your fit. Thank you. And LaRush. I think this is all really helpful advice. And uh, I, I think also thinking about visiting schools locally, you know, it's difficult to travel um, during COVID. So while you may not be able to come abroad, at least go see schools in the Carolinas or within a few hours drive from you to get a sense of large versus small, you know, rural versus urban. Um, sometimes it looks exciting on the virtual tour, but then you get there and you say, wow, this is just going to be too big for me or wow, this feels too small. So, um, you know, even, even visiting the state schools in, um, in North Carolina or South Carolina can really give you a lot of insight about an international campus. All righty, thank you so much. And we have time for one more question here. Um, and it looks like there's a question in the Q&A, so it's up to anybody because it wasn't addressed to anyone. So first, first come, first serve, whoever wants to answer that. Um, the, uh, the next question is going to be, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we're going to start right back up the top with uh, University of California, Irvine. Yeah, every year we try to break a Guinness Book of World Record. We have um, a record for the largest game of dodgeball ever played, largest water blaster fight, largest game of capture the flag, um, some large <clears throat> fights, so um, some fun ones. So come to UCI and you can be part of the Guinness Book of World Records, hopefully. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, Soka University. Yeah, those are always neat to hear about. We uh, down the street are too small to ever go after a record like that, but we do have something called International Festival, which is really 
a great day where uh, students from different clubs kind of come together, collaborate and, and showcase their, their, their passions, which is really nice to see as well as prepare really great food from the many regions that our, our students are, are coming from, which is cool to see. And then the, uh, the community comes up to campus and just gets to know faculty, staff, students. It's just a really great day where we get to just, just kind of all come together uh, as, a, as a community, which is, which is fun to see. So um, that's been a tradition that has since been, been halted, but one we're really looking forward to, to picking back up in the near future. Great, thank you so much. And Macquarie University? Uh, we celebrate Conception Day, which is actually a week where we celebrate the university being signed into being, and it's a um, music festival and arts festival that happens on campus in September. Awesome, thank you. University of Melbourne? Uh, yeah, I would just say the weekly farmer's market on Wednesdays that also has uh, great food stalls and there's just usually live music and uh, just a, a great vibe for everyone just to come together and, and hang out, take a break from studies. Thank you. Uh, University College Dublin? Yeah, I would have to say um, probably what we'd call our colors match. Um, so that is traditionally a rugby game um, between us and um, our, our friendly rival down the road for sports. Um, it is a, it's a big game. Coaches say if you win the colors match, you have had a successful season no matter what. Um, and it has, it has expanded to other sports. So um, the um, rivalry games between our schools um, are all called color matches and it's a good time. Awesome, thank you. And LaRush. I would say our international festival as well. And we haven't been able to do the food portion as, as my colleague mentioned, but hoping to, to get that back. That's everyone's favorite. Um, and a lot of our faculty and staff participate as well. So they make Swiss specialties or Spanish ones that are um, local to their canton or to their region. And um, it's a, a really great way to bond. Awesome, thank you everyone so much. And we are, going to uh, uh, finish up here with uh, thanking everyone for joining, all of our attendees for joining, and a special thank you to all of our presenters as well, too, for taking the time out to uh, just continue on in this, uh, this season as well, and just pushing forward to get the missions of your schools out and to get the interest going and keep people in school as well. Um, so there's going to be a quick four-question survey that's going to appear after you close this window. Uh, so please make sure to fill that out. There are no more sessions for this fair in particular, but you can always watch recordings of this fair as well uh, within about a week at shrivescan.com slash Carolinas. So I just want to say thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your week and good luck on the college search process. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.